All right, in this tutorial, we're going to practice a few surface area problems. And in this problem, we are dealing with the cube. And the problem reads that Ray is wrapping a cube shaped box and wants to make sure he has enough wrapping paper. And the net for the box is shown. And we have to find the area that he needs to cover. Well, we should know that a cube is comprised of six congruent squares. So let's start by finding the area of this square right here. Well, this edge is 5.5, which means this edge is 5.5, as the length and the width of any square are equal to each other. So to find the area of that square, we have to multiply 5.5 by 5.5. So starting with 5 times 5.5, we get 25. We carry the 2, and that's going to be 25 plus 2 more is 27. All right, so we're done with this digit, so we put a zero directly under, and we have the same digit here, so we're going to get 275 once again. So we add these digits up, we get 5, this is 12, this row here, or this column is 10, and this column is 3. And be careful, a lot of people want to take this decimal and drop it straight down, but that would be incorrect. What you would do is count the total number of place values after all decimals in the problem. In this case, we have a total of two, and that's how many place values should be after your decimal in the answer. So it should be placed in this position. Now, 30 and a quarter is the area of just one of the surfaces, and all six surfaces are congruent. So we're going to take 30.25 and multiply that by six. All right, so 6 times 5 is 30. 2 times 6 is 12, plus the 3 we carried is 15. 6 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And 6 times 3 is 18. And our decimal goes right here in this position. So Ray would need 181 and a half, or 5 tenths, square inches of wrapping paper to completely cover all six surfaces of the cube-shaped box. All right, let's do another example. All right, we have to determine the surface area of the square pyramid by using the grid that it's located upon. Now, one thing we should know about any square pyramid is that it is composed of five surfaces. And four of the surfaces are four congruent triangles, and the base is a square. So we should be able to solve this without using the formula to find the surface area of a square pyramid, as long as you know how to find the area of a triangle and the area of a square. So let's start with this triangle right here. So the base of this triangle is 6. So if we were to measure from here and then end up here, that is the length of its base. So from here to here is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we have to figure out the height of our triangle. So starting at the bottom, this is 0, and this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the base and the height of this triangle are the same. The base is 6 and the height is 6. Now to find the area of any triangle, you multiply the base and the height together, and you take that product and divide by 2. So we have 36 divided by 2, which is 18. And because we have four congruent triangles, we can take 18 and multiply by 4 to find the area of those four triangles. And 18 times 4 is equal to 72. All right, next we have to find the area of the square and add it to 72. Well, we already know that the base of our triangle is 6, and because it shares an edge with the square, we know that the width of that square is 6, and the length is also 6 since it's a square. So we have a 6 by 6 square, which would produce an area of 36. And if we add those two figures together, we get 108 square units. All right, let's do another example. All right, this time we're going to calculate the surface area of a rectangular prism. 
Now, the technique I like to use is something called the Y method. Basically, I like to draw what looks like a capital letter Y. And then I take the length of each of the three dimensions and write those numbers at the end of each prong of this Y. And then I multiply two numbers at a time and write the product where those two lines meet up. So 5 times 8 is 40. 8 times 9 is 72. And 5 times 9 is 45. So what we could say is we have one surface that is 40 square units. We have a second surface with an area of 45 square units. And we have a third surface with an area of 72 square units. But what we should understand is that each surface of a rectangular prism has a congruent side to it. So because this surface is 40, there's going to be another surface that's 40. And we have two surfaces with an area of 72 and two surfaces with an area of 45. So what we could do is just take these three values to start with and add them together. And once we come up with that sum, we can take that sum and double it. So 2 plus 5 is 7. And 7 plus 4 plus 4 is 15. So the area of these three surfaces is 157. And we have to double that number. So this would be 14. 2 times 5 is 10 plus that 1 we carried is 11. And 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 more is 3. So the surface area of this rectangular prism is 314 square centimeters. All right, let's do another example. What we have here is a triangular prism. A triangular prism has five surfaces, and two of the surfaces are a pair of congruent triangles. Now, what we're going to do first is find the area of the two triangles and then add that to the area of the three rectangular surfaces. So what we have to do first is identify the length of the triangle's base. So the base of this triangle would be from this point to this point. And if we look below here, it says that this line right here is 6, which means that this line right here is also 6. So the base of this triangle is 6 and its height is 4. Now with a triangular prism, if you take the base and the height of that triangle and multiply it together, we get 24. Now normally you would cut that in half to get the area of that single face, but we would end up doubling it because the other triangle is congruent to that one. So if we cut 24 in half to get 12, we would be doubling it back to get 24. So if you take the base and the height of a single triangular face of a triangular prism, and just leave it alone, that's actually going to give you the area of the two triangular faces. So we're just going to do 6 times 4 and know that both of these triangles have an area of 24. All right, let's look at this rectangle right here. Now we can see that one of its dimensions is 8, and we have to figure out what this length is. Well, if we were to fold this up into its three-dimensional figure, we would know that this edge here would line up perfectly with this edge. And because this is 5, this edge has to be 5. So this is a 5 by 8 rectangle for a total of 40. All right, now this middle rectangle here has a width of 6 and a length of 8. Because this edge is 8, this edge is 8. And 6 times 8 is 48. And over here, this edge is 8, and this edge right here is 5. And the reason we know that is we can see that this is an isosceles triangle. So if this side here is 5, this side here has to be 5. And these two edges would end up lining up. So the area of this rectangle is 40, just like the one over here. It should be noted that whenever you have a triangular prism where the triangular surface is an isosceles triangle, two of the three rectangles are going to be congruent to each other. If the triangle was an equilateral triangle, all three rectangles would be equal to each other. And if the triangle were a scalene triangle, all three of the rectangular surfaces would be a different area. So we know that 24 is the area of the two triangular surfaces. We have two 40s, which equals 80. And we have a rectangle with an area of 48. 
And if we add those together, that gives us a total of 152 square feet. All right, I hope this tutorial on surface area was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can be informed as new uploads become available that just may help you with your math homework.